places. Hi guys, so this is day 18, part 3. So Paul Greenery rises again to resume his cross-examination of Sean Zeisk. He says, we are still dealing with a motive for the attack on Forty Linster Road. I want to look at what you were saying to Liv herself. He also asks the court usher to hand the jury some printed documents. These documents are transcripts of a series of text messages sent between Sean Zeisk and his ex-girlfriend, Olivia McDowell. Paul Greenery says, These messages provide the foundation for a suggestion that you were in a state of absolute rage about what was happening between Liv and Dusty. They cover a period from late July up until the time of Ashley's killing. Do you accept these are messages you were exchanging by WhatsApp with Liv? Sean says, yes. Paul Greenery said, they begin on Friday, July the 29th. You sent Liv a message saying, you're really picking that smackhead up again from town. Was the smackhead dusty? And Sean says, it was, yeah. Paul Greenery asks, were you intending to suggest he was a user of Class A drugs? And Sean says, yeah. Paul Greenery asks, you also added, you've been seen. Someone had seen her picking Dusty up. And Sean says, yes. Paul Greenery continues to read and he says, wow, see when people see you, they're going to batter you. Were you suggesting as a result of associating with him Someone was going to assault her. Sean says, yeah, one of her family. Paul Greenery says, you said, trust me. Then you said, you little fucking tramp. Obviously an insulting term for a young woman. Is that what you intended? To insult her? And Sean says, yes. Paul Greenery continues to read and he says, picking him up in your car last night from town. Then you added, you're a vomit, you know. A rather graphic insult. Was it right someone had seen her picking Dusty up? And Sean says, no, I don't think so. Paul Greenery says, so you were just making this up? And Sean says, I was just trying to catch her out. Paul Greenery says, she replied, what? I've been in Tom's. What is a reference to Tom's? And Sean says, that's her friend. Paul Greenery says, You weren't satisfied, it seems, with that explanation. You replied, Got that little rat in the car. You were trying to catch out Liv in her association with Dusty. And Sean says, I just thought these messages were when I was away in Portugal. Paul Greenery said, I was assuming you'd return to the UK by July the 29th. Has someone told you they've been seen picking up Dusty? Sean says he had, yeah. Paul Greenery says, did you have people around Liverpool watching the movements of Liv? And Sean says, no, they were just out together. Paul Greenery says, who was it that told you? And Sean says, just a friend. Paul Greenery asks, you said, got that little rat in the car. The little rat being a reference to Dusty. She was asking what were you on about, swearing on a nan's life. Were you saying someone had videoed her picking up Dusty? And was it true? And Sean says it was, yeah. Paul Greenery said, How was it that people knew you were so interested that they filmed her? Sean says, I've been out with her for five years. I don't have people out watching her. They're just friends telling me the truth. Paul Green continues and he says, you carry on. Why has he got you in his? Why has Tom got you in his house? Whoever around you getting it as well? Did that mean whoever associated with Liv could expect to be assaulted too? And Sean says, yeah, at the time I was angry. Paul Green says, I appreciated that. The question is, how angry? Which we'll get to. You wanted Liv your former partner, to believe not only she was getting assaulted, but anyone with her would also be assaulted as well. And Sean says, yeah. 
Paul Greenery says. She explained she'd gone to Tom's because she didn't have a telly. Then you replied, you choose your side. Do you mean you choose your side? And Sean says, I meant choose, yeah. Paul Greenery says, there on July 29th, you were saying to Liv, she has chosen her side. And Sean says, I have, yeah. That is reference to Ricky, Ricky and Dusty. Everyone stopped speaking to Dusty because Ricky killed himself. If you're sitting with Dusty, you're not on Ricky's side. Nothing to do with now Barry or any of them. Paul Greenery said, there were sides. One side being the Hillsiders and the other side being now Barry and his group. You were saying she had chosen the opposing side from me and Niall. Sean says, no, totally wrong. The whole of Heighton was with Ricky. Everyone had a cob on because Ricky had killed himself. Paul Greenery says, they've attempted to see this situation, saying his mum's away, a reference to Tom, and then this is a joke. Do you agree that these messages by you were intended to frighten and intimidate Liv? Sean says, yeah, I was very angry, yeah, I'm embarrassed of them. Paul Greenery says, I asked whether your intention was to frighten and intimidate Liv. Sean says, yes. Paul Greenery continues and he says, we then see Saturday, July the 30th, that's the day of the balloon release. You said, you going out tomorrow, are you? Are you going to that place tomorrow? You best not be like a little sweat knocking around with Dusty. You're sending that at just gone midnight. Were you saying she better not go to that balloon release? Sean says, no, I just said you better not be knocking around like a little sweat with Dusty. I didn't tell her don't go. Paul Greenery said, sweat is another word for a slut or a slag. And Sean says, it is, yeah. Paul Greenery said, she replied, I'm not going. Have I misunderstood when I suggested you were preventing her from going to Ricky's balloon release? Sean says, if she wanted to go, she could have went. I never stopped her from doing anything. Paul Greenery says, you replied, good. The next entry is Tuesday, August the 2nd. We're creeping nearer and nearer to the date of the attack. You said, yo, who's the lad in the car today? Has someone reported to you they had seen a lad in Liv's car? Sean says they did, yeah. Paul Green asks, was this the same person? And Sean says no. No, no a different person. Paul Green says, a different person who knew you wanted to understand what Liv's movements were. Sean says, no, they just says Liv just drove past me, I've just seen her. Paul Greenery says, we have some photographs sent to you by Liv. Do you remember those were photographs you had been sent by Liv of Ricky? Sean says it was, yeah. Paul Greenery says, was a reference to Imagine, a reference to a well-known song by John Lennon? Sean says, I'm not too sure. Paul Greenery says, this was an affectionate gesture by Liv towards you. She was sending photographs of your dear friend who had died. Did it seem a friendly or affectionate thing for her to be doing? Sean says no. I think I asked her for them. Paul Greenery says, This is taking place on August the 10th, the day of Ricky's funeral and wake. The messages were photographs. You start to reply at 9 minutes past 9 within minutes. You said, stay away from me, golly in your face in front of everyone. You explained to me that meant spit in your face. And Sean says it does, yeah. Paul Greenery says, send you home covered in piss, you rat cunt. Knock me sick. You know what you've done and how you act. Swear, mate. Were you saying that if she went and came anywhere near you, you would spit in her face in front of everyone? Sean says, I was, yeah. I was just angry. Paul Greenery says, she replied, I won't go, it's okay. Sean says, she did, yeah. 
Paul Green recess. He then followed that up, saying, Slags, go with Slags. Slags agree with Slags, you little wretch. Imagine, you will see. Think we give a fuck about you or anyone? What do you mean by that? Sean says, I'm not too sure. Paul Green asks, who was the we? Think we give a fuck about you or anyone? And Sean says, it would be about me and Ian, just over Olivia. Paul Green says, she replied, I'm not going with Holly. And Sean says, because she's a prostitute. That's why I'm angry with her. She's going to the funeral with prostitutes. I've been to see her. Sorted things out and spoke to her. She stayed in mine a couple of times before Ashley's death. Paul Green says, You're saying shortly before August the 10th, she'd been to stay with you. And Sean says, I think she'd been to see me. Paul Green says, You're not suggesting you cleared the air. And Sean says, No. Paul Green says, She replied, I'm not going with Holly. What are you on about? What have I done? I won't go to the funeral. Do you agree that in short, you would frighten Liv off on going to the funeral of Ricky Warnick? And Sean says, I just didn't want her to go with people she was going with. Paul Greenery says, she had agreed not to go. And Sean says, yeah, I seen her there though. And Paul Greenery says, you're saying you're getting whipped, you, you fat ugly rat. Texting rats even now. What was that a reference to? Sean says, I think she sent me a picture of a text with Dusty. Paul Greenery says, if we could accept she'd been to your house by August the 10th. Sean interrupts and he says, I don't think she'd been to mine after Ricky's funeral. She stayed a couple of times. Paul Greenery says, she sent you an emoji. What does that emoji demonstrate? And Sean says, a broken heart. Paul Greenery says, In the face of these messages from you, she has indicated she had a broken heart. And Sean says, yeah. And Paul Greenery says, And your response to that was, You fucking smackhead, shagging him for weeks. He was the him. And Sean says, Dusty. Paul Greenery says, You certainly were suggesting she was involved in a sexual relationship with him. And Sean says, I was there, yeah. And Paul Greenery says, Was that what you believed? And Sean says, At the time. Paul Greenery says, We're now on August the 12th. You smackhead, you added. You're lying to me, you little piece of shit. To which she replied, This is bad, this, I haven't. Then do we have a series of broken heart emojis? And Sean says yes. Paul Greenery says, Do you agree throughout this period you were behaving towards Liv in an aggressive way? And Sean says, I was, yeah. Paul Greenery says, Throughout this period, she was trying to calm you down. And Sean says, No, she weren't. Paul Greenery says, Then you add, What's your tits are getting it? Gonna cut your tits off. Mum's life, rat. Did you mean to suggest you might cut her breasts off? And Sean says, oh, I was just angry, yeah. Paul Greenery says, then you said texting him now. Who was the him? And Sean says, Dusty. Paul Greenery says, did you text him? And Sean says, no, no, she texted him. She was texting him. Paul Greenery says, you were making that threat to her in the belief that she was texting Dusty. And Sean says, she was, yeah. Paul Greenery says, she replied, this is bad. And you replied, you smackhead. And Sean says, yes. Paul Greenery says, to which she said, because I had to. And Sean says, she's replying to texting him now. Paul Greenery says, then you reply, rat. And Sean says, yeah. Paul Greenery says, you've been speaking to Todd. This is what I'm getting hit with, saying I want his number. What are you on about? What was this a reference to? Sean says, 
Olivia had been asking for some lad's number. Poor Greenery says, she replied, I haven't on my nan's life, not spoke to anyone. What are you on about? Never spoke to Terry in my life. This is crazy shit, this. Sean says she was denying it, asking for Todd's number. My brother's girlfriend had told me she wanted Todd's number. It turns out to be a pack of lies. Paul Greenery said, we're now at August the 16th, five days before the death of Ashley. You replied, you have, because you mentioned it to Todd. You fucking weird jangling cunt. Do you accept, Mr Zeiss, that you were in a state of extreme jealousy? And Sean says, no it wasn't. And Paul Greenery says, do you accept you were in an absolute rage about what was happening between Olivia and Dusty? And Sean says, I was just angry with Olivia. It was between me and my girlfriend and no one else. Paul Greenery says, we're now at August the 20th, at 8 minutes past 10. You're asking, you out are you? Why did you send that message? And Sean says, I was just seeing if she was out. Paul Greenery said, she replied no, in my nans. And Sean says yes. Paul Greenery said, then over the course of the 21st, there are a series of messages in which you indicate you wish to speak to her. Mr Zeisk, let me put the position to you bluntly. We've now analysed events at Glastonbury. We've heard Ashley's own explanation for the deterioration. What we've seen in your messages to now Barry and with Liv is the explanation for why Ashley was killed. Your uncontrolled anger about Liv, Dusty and the Hillsiders and now Barry's long-standing feud with Lee Harrison. Sean says, it's got nothing to do with it. And Paul Greenery says, that's why James Witham and Joseph Pierce left that flat that night to go and kill Lee Harrison. And Sean says, over Olivia? And Paul Greenery says, over the dispute between now Barry and Lee Harrison, which had been reignited by what happened at Glastonbury. And Sean says, no, wrong. Paul Green returns to August 20th and he says, it's 13 minutes past 9pm on the 20th. We see you arriving on Pilch Lane in your Mercedes. Sean says, we do, yeah. Paul Greenery says, we see you getting some food, then going into the flat. You had been invited there by Joseph Pears. Sean says, that's right. Paul Greenery says, your understanding was that he would be watching the boxing with you and the others at Pilch Lane. Sean says, that's right, yeah. Paul Greenery says, you had no understanding that he had a plan to go and watch the boxing with his father. And Sean says, I didn't. Paul Greenery says, we know in due course, Joseph Pierce and James Witham leave. There is the two of them leaving at 9 minutes past 10 p.m. You said on February the 13th, in the prepared statement you gave, you give in an account of the events in that flat. You say one of the others at the flat owed me money which I had been chasing for over two weeks. Was that a reference to now Barry? Sean says it was, yeah. Paul Greenery says, we know in the period after the killing, now Barry had access to substantial sums. Did you know he had access to that money? Sean says, um, I suppose so, yeah. Paul Greenery says, because the question is, if he had access to that money and owes you more than £20,000, why wasn't he paying you? Sean says, I should think he was getting paid, yeah. Paul Greenery reads from his statement and it says, he, now Barry, told me there was cannabis at the flat he intended to sell the following morning. I agreed to stay over and go with him the next day. The two of the others had been drinking. With him became rowdy and he was asked to leave. Joe also left and said he was going home. Paul Greenery says, that was a complete surprise to you that he was going home. Sean says it was, yeah. Paul Greenery goes on to read, as soon as Joe left, I called him to get some cigarettes. I called him about two or three times, but he didn't answer. Paul Greenery says, you were saying as soon as he left, I called him and asked him to get some cigarettes. Sean says, yes. Paul Greenery said, 
He said something similar in your defence statement and something similar in your evidence last Wednesday. There are a couple of problems here. The first attempt you make to call Joseph Pierce is at 6 minutes past 11pm. And Sean says, yeah. Paul Greenery says, this is the first issue the jury may welcome your help with. You maintain you telephoned Joseph Pierce as soon as he had left the flat, which was 9 minutes past 10. Yet in fact it appears that it was not nearly for an hour. Could you explain? Sean says, I said this before I seen the evidence. I was an hour off. This is before I seen any evidence, before I was charged. I said that. I thought it was straight away, but obviously it's just under an hour later. Paul Greenery says, Your explanation is, although you had the thought, the call was made immediately. You now accept you didn't make that call for an hour. Sean says, I accept that, yeah. Paul Greenery says, The second problem is, we can see 267 Pilch Lane, and there's the hairdressers just to the right. But then next door to that cherry shop, go local. That shop was open that night until 1am. That shop sold cigarettes and alcohol. If when Pierce left at 9 minutes past 10, you were keen on having cigarettes, why not just walk down the stairs, a couple of seconds to your left, and buy them from the go local? Sean says, we already had cigarettes. It's not like we had no ciggies. We asked Joe to come back and on the way to grab a pack. Now said it was shut. It shuts at 11. Paul Greenery says, The explanation for this problem is, you were given inaccurate information about the closing time. And Sean says, yeah. It's not like we were desperate. We were staying up until 3, so he would have needed more ciggies. If he says it's shut, I'll believe him. He's living there. Paul Greenery says, Can I suggest an alternative that I suggest is correct? The reason why you were an hour out with your calls to Piers. The reason why you didn't pop to the go local is because the call you made at 6 minutes past 11 was for a completely different reason. And Sean says it wasn't. It was a couple of minutes before the fight was about to start. Are you watching it here or what? Paul Greenery goes on and he says, Ian Fitzgibbon was there in the flat with you. You were able to see each other what the other was doing and saying and able to speak to each other. And Sean's eyes says yes. Paul Greenery says, what was happening over the period of time? At six minutes past 11, Ian Fitzgibbon makes an attempt to call James Witham and doesn't get through. Then you make an attempt to call Joseph Pierce. Again, you didn't get through. Sean says yes. Paul Greenery says, a second after that, Ian Fitzgibbon attempts to call Joseph Piers. He doesn't get through. Then 19 seconds later, he makes a call to James Witham. Were you aware, as the two of you sat near to each other, you were both trying to get in contact with the same people? Sean says we were trying to ring them to see if they were coming and watching the boxing. The fight was starting in three minutes. I knew they were together. They went out together, didn't they? Paul Greenery says, at nine minutes past eleven, Ian Fitzgibbon sends a message to James Witham. You call Joseph Pierce. What we know is that James Witham was on his way to carry out a shooting. We know that now. And Sean says, we do, yeah. Paul Greenery says, the Crown's case is that Joseph Pierce was part of that hit team. Why were you and Ian Fitzgibbon keen on speaking to those men at that time? Sean says, we just wanted them to come back and watch the boxing. I didn't know he'd be asked to leave and go and get his drugs somewhere else. Joe got off. I'm sitting there thinking, why has he done that? Paul Greenery says, The reality is, you and Ian Fitzgibbon were seeking an update about how the plan to attack Forty Linster Road was progressing. And Sean says, no, that's wrong. I had no reason to. They were my friends. Paul Greenery continues and he says, at ten past eleven, you made contact with the phone of Joseph Pierce, and there was a call lasting 23 seconds. At this stage, just a short time before the attack on the car of Ashley Dale. Do you accept you actually spoke to Joseph Pierce? And Sean says, I did, yeah. Paul Greenery says, what do you say you were talking about, if not the plan to attack 40 Linster Road? 
And Sean says to come back and watch the boxing. He said I'd be round in a minute. Do you want anything? I said, yeah, bring some ciggies. Paul Greenery says, you gone there expecting him to watch the fight with you? He had then left before the fight started. You spoke to him at ten past eleven and he said he was coming back round. You thought he was coming pretty much straight back around. And Sean says, yeah. Paul Greenery says, if he was at home, he was about five minutes from the flat. And Sean says, about five minutes walk, yeah. Paul Greenery said, did he say anything about his intention to watch the fight with his dad? And Sean says, no. He said he was coming round to watch the fight. Paul Greenery says, Mr Pears is giving his evidence. And you've given your evidence now about that call. You say he said to you he was coming back around. Now Ashley was shot and killed at 30 minutes past 12 in the morning. About 15 minutes and a bit more, you were again attempting to contact Joseph Pierce. You made two attempts to call Joseph Pierce, didn't you? And Sean says, I did, yeah, to see where he was and why he hasn't come back round. I think Ian had just left. He said, do you want a lift? And Barry said, stay, stay, we'll get the dough in the morning. I wish I'd got off. Paul Greenery says, what were you asking Joseph Pierce in these calls at quarter to one? Sean says, they didn't go through, did they? And Paul Greenery says, but what did you intend to ask him? And Sean says, to come back round. Why haven't you come back around? And Paul Greenery says, but he still hasn't arrived. And Sean says, we've watched the boxing, but the UFC was on. Ian had got off, so we phoned Joe. The main event wasn't until three or four o'clock in the morning. Paul Greenery says, it wasn't to check if the killing had been carried out. And Sean says, 100% no. I wasn't aware of anything. Paul Greenery says, nearly 15 minutes later, Joseph Pierce actually calls you back. There's a call lasting 19 seconds. Do you agree there was a conversation at that stage? Sean says, there was, yeah. Paul Greenery says, is it your explanation that he called you to see if you're still at the flat and I'll come back? And Sean says, that was it. He said, I'll be round now. Paul Greenery says, did he say anything about with him being with him? And Sean says, no. Paul Greenery says, Mr Zeiss, what I suggest to you is that call by Joseph Pierce to you was an update to you about what had happened at 40 Linster Road. And Sean says, 100% no. Paul Greenery says, it's only five minutes from his mother's house. And at this stage, presumably, you expected him to arrive shortly after one o'clock. Sean says, I did, yeah. Paul Greenery says, by 18 minutes past one, he obviously hasn't arrived back at the flat. And Sean says, he hasn't. Paul Greenery says, you called him yet again. And Sean says, yeah. Paul Greenery asks, why? And Sean says, to see where he is. I just said, you coming round. It's 20 minutes on. Where are you? Paul Greenery says, the reason you wanted to know where he was, because you, Ian Fitzgibbon and now Barry, wanted an update about how the plot to attack had gone, didn't you? And Sean says, not a chance. Paul Greenery says, we went over the return of Witham and Piers and the stage at which Witham had made his confession. In simple terms, you were surprised Witham come back with Piers. And Sean says, yeah. Paul Greenery says, because he had been asked to leave. And Sean says, when I was on the phone to him, he didn't say he was with Witham. Paul Greenery says, Witham then confessed at the time you can't help us with. And Sean says, I couldn't tell you the time, no. Paul Greenery says, all of what you have said about this is lies. You knew what Witham and Piers were up to and you were in on it. And Sean says, no, I wasn't in on it. They weren't lies. You weren't there, so you wouldn't know. Paul Greenery says, the next day, were you involved in moving the car to St Helens? And Sean says, no, never been that car in my life. Paul Greenery says, 
over the period moved, we could see Joseph Pierce's phone was inactive. We could see the phone of Ian Fitzgibbon was over that period inactive. Sean says, I was with Ian Fitzgibbon at that time. And Paul Greenery says, your phone was also inactive. And Sean says, it was, yeah. Paul Greenery says, if you weren't involved in the movement of this vehicle, why, why was your phone inactive? And Sean says, I'm not sure. It might have been off. There's a picture of my car outside my mum's, who now Barry and Ian Fitzgibbons as passengers. Paul Greenery says, Does it remain your position? You were at your mother's home having your Sunday lunch. And Sean says, I was there from about three o'clock to about four o'clock. Paul Greenery says, You left your friends outside in the car. And Sean says, Yeah, it happens all the time. I wouldn't bring people into my mum's as they don't like people in the house. End of my questions. Let me put the prosecution case to you fair and square. Your violent hatred and vanity drove what happened that night. You encouraged an attack on Linster Road, intending that Lee Harrison be killed and no one be left behind. You fully supported the use of a machine gun to that end. Sean says, not a chance. Lee and Ashley were my friends. I never fell out with Lee, never argued with him. Paul Greenery says, he has no further questions. Mr Davies says he has no questions on re-examination. Next, Adam Davies, defending Sean Zeiss, calls the next witness. The next witness is Ellie Mae Zeiss Clark. She's sworn in, she confirms her name, and she's 26 years old. Adam Davies asks, how long have you known Sean Zeiss? Ellie says, all my life, he's my cousin. Adam Davies asks, what's the relation? And Ellie says, my mum and his dad are brother and sister. Adam Davies asks, how close are you? And Ellie says, really close. Adam Davies asks, could you tell us your occupation? And Ellie says, I'm a dental nurse. I actually work in Leeds. Adam Davies asks, how long have you been doing that? And Ellie says, I've been in Leeds about six months, but I've been with the company about four years. Adam Davies asks, do you have no previous convictions? And Ellie says no. Adam Davies asks, I want to ask you about Glastonbury last year. Did you go to Glastonbury? And Ellie says, I did, yeah. Adam Davies asks, who did you go with? And Ellie says, my friend Taylor. Adam Davies asks, did you go with other people? And Ellie says, there was a group of us, yeah. Adam Davies asks, did you see Sean at Glastonbury? And Ellie says, yeah. Adam Davies asks, were you aware he was going? And Ellie says, yes. Adam Davies asks, what days did you go? And Ellie says, Friday to Monday. Adam Davies asks, did you see Sean while you were there? And Ellie says, yeah, Saturday and Sunday. Adam Davies asks, were you aware of any incident Sean had while he was at Glastonbury? And Ellie says, I was, yeah. Adam Davies asks, who told you? And Ellie says, Sean. She also says she saw Sean on the Sunday. She goes on to say, it was a Sunday afternoon. We were all just at a tent seeing the same DJ. I saw he had a scratch on his nose. He told me he had a bit of trouble the night before. He got hit, it was someone called Wally, over his mate owing him money. Adam Davies asks, was he with Liv all the time he was with you? And Ellie says no. Adam Davies asks, was there a point where you saw him on his own? And Ellie says, on Sunday we went to a different tent. I told Sean to come with us. Liv wasn't with us then. Adam Davies asks, he told you what it was about? And Ellie says, over a friend owing him money. Adam Davies says, you didn't ask him anything further about it. And Ellie agrees. Adam Davies goes on to say, 
He noticed a scratch on his nose. Anything else? Nelly says no. Adam Davies says, did he complain of any other injuries? And Ellie says no. Adam Davies asks, I think you gave us a photograph of you and Sean. That's a copy there. Did that come from your telephone? And Ellie says yeah. Adam Davies says, is that you on the left? And Ellie says it is, yeah. Adam Davies asks, who's that on the right? And Ellie says, that's Sean. Adam Davies says, when was that taken? And Ellie says, Sunday night. Adam Davies asks, was it after Sean had been hit? And Ellie says, yeah. Adam Davies says, did you see Liv at all during the festival? And Ellie said, I seen her the Saturday afternoon and the Sunday afternoon. Adam Davies says, why was Sean not with her on the Sunday? And Ellie said, he said he left her where he was before because she was doing his edit. And Mr Davies says he has no further questions. But Paul Green re-rises and they have a few more questions. Paul Greenery says, You did not see yourself any assault on Sean or your cousin? And Ellie says no. Paul Greenery says, From your own direct knowledge, you can't help us with who did or did not assault him. And Ellie says, Just what Sean has told me. Paul Greenery says, You can't say, I saw it and it was him. And Ellie says, I can't say for certain, no. Paul Greenery says, when you spoke to Sean about it, he told you someone called Wally had done the assault. Was Wally a name you knew? Ellie says, no, never heard of him before. He said his friend owed him money. I didn't ask him anything else. Paul Greenery asks, and he didn't volunteer anything else about it? And Ellie says, no. Paul Greenery says, on Sunday afternoon, you met up with Sean. Was that by arrangement, or did you bump into each other? Ellie says, I think it was an arrangement. I can't entirely remember. Paul Greenery says, when you saw him, was he with Liv? And Ellie says, yeah. Paul Greenery asks, there then came a time when he wasn't with Liv. He went with you, and she went with someone else. Ellie said, she stayed where she was. Paul Greenery says, do you know Lee Harrison? And Ellie says, briefly. Paul Greenery says, and did you know Ashley Dale? And Ellie says, yeah. Paul Greenery says, did you either see or did Sean tell you Liv would be with them? Ellie says, I seen Lee and Ashley in the same tent where we was. And Paul Greenery says, by the Sunday, it's clear to you that Sean and Liv had been arguing. Ellie says it wasn't clear now. Paul Greenery says, but she was doing his editing. And Ellie says, that's nothing out of the ordinary for Sean and Liv. They always bicker. Paul Greenery says, he left Liv with Ashley and Lee. And Ellie says, I don't know for certain that's who he left her with. Paul Greenery says he has no further questions for Ellie's ice clerk and they are released from the witness box. Next to give evidence is Angela Jones. She confirms she works as a domestic in Broad Green Hospital and has no previous convictions. Adam Davies is the first one to question her. Adam Davies asks, you are the mother of Sean's ice? Miss Jones says yes. Adam Davies says, he's your youngest son. And Angela says yes. Adam Davies says, you had two other children. How old is your oldest? Angela says, 41. Adam Davies says, and your middle son? And Angela says, 31. Adam Davies says, and Sean is. And Angela says, 28. Adam Davies asks, I'd like to take you back to the summer of 2022. Where was Sean living at the time? Angela says, Longreach Road. Adam Davies asks, 
Whose property is that? Angela says, Me and his dad's. Adam Davies asks, Was there a time where he lived with someone else? Angela says, He went to live in a flat in Egbert with Olivia. Adam Davies asks, I want to ask you about Sunday, August the 21st. Can you tell me about what happened that day? Angela says, I sent Sean a message in the morning to see if he wanted some Sunday dinner. I was doing lamb and he loved lamb. Adam Davies asks, where had you been that day? Angela says, I'd been to work. Adam Davies asks, what time did you finish? And Angela says, one o'clock. Adam asks, what time was lunch? And Angela says, we regularly have it about half three, four o'clock. Adam Davies asks, who came for dinner? And Angela says, Sean, I don't know about his dad, he'd gone out. Adam Davies asks, do you know how long Sean was at your address? And Angela says, maybe an hour, hour and a half. Adam Davies asks, can I ask you how you remember the events? And Angela says, we were talking about our nephew's wedding the following Saturday, the 27th. Adam Davies says, were you all going? And Angela says, yes. Adam Davies asks, where was the wedding? And Angela says, in Ibiza. Adam Davies asks, had flights been booked? And Angela says, yes. Adam Davies asks, including Sean? And Angela says, yes, including Sean. Adam Davies says, can you remember any specific conversation about it? Angela said, Sean was going to be an usher at the wedding. He wasn't overly keen on the shoes. I persuaded him, you'll be fine. Everyone else will be wearing them. Adam Davies asks, was there anything unusual about that Sunday? And Angela says, not that I could recall. Adam Davies asks, how often would Sean come round for lunch on a Sunday? And Angela says, a lot. He was always welcome. And Adam Davies says, he has no further questions for Angela Jones. But Paul Greenery rises to cross-examine Angela. Paul Greenery says, did Sean have a job in summer last year? Angela says, not that I recall. Paul Greenery asks, we know he had a Mercedes. And Angela says, yes. Paul Greenery says, he obviously liked his clothes. And Angela says, yes. Paul Greenery says, he told us about some very expensive flip-flops he had. All of those things cost money, don't they? In summer last year, where did your son tell you he was getting his money from? Angela says, I didn't ask him. Paul Greenery says, he had no job, no obvious source of income, yet he had all this stuff. Did you not say, Sean, how are you funding this? Angela says, he wouldn't have told me anyway, so I never asked. Paul Greenery asks, have you ever met Olivia? And Angela says, yes. Paul Greenery says, Sean had been going out with her for a number of years, they'd lived together. Angela says yes. Paul Greenery says, In summer last year, what did you understand the state of their relationship to be? Angela says, It was just on and off. It was not the way it was. It was on a slippery slope, should I say. Paul Greenery asks, Had he told you about any particular problems? And Angela says no. Paul Greenery says, So the wedding off, was it your nephew? And Angela says yes. Paul Greenery asks, was that an important event in your family? And Angela says yes, because we've been waiting since pre-Covid to go. Paul Greenery asks, am I right there will have been more than one occasion on which that trip was discussed? Angela says yes. Paul Greenery says, sometimes on other days. And Angela says yes. Paul Greenery says, When was it you were first asked by Sean or anyone else to think back to August the 21st? When did someone first say, help us with what you can remember? 
Angela says, I can't recall. Paul Greenery says, was it quite recently? Angela says, I can't recall. Paul Greenery says, I'm going to ask you to try and recall. How long ago was it you were asked to think back to August last year? Angela says, maybe the February. Paul Greenery says, about six months after these events. And Angela says, maybe, yeah. Paul Greenery says, you were thinking back six months to a Sunday in circumstances in which Sean often came to your house on a Sunday, in which your nephew's wedding had been discussed a number of times. Angela says yes. Paul Greenery says, let's accept you have accurately recalled Sunday, August the 21st. How did Sean seem to be doing that afternoon? Angela says, he was a lot quieter, but we were discussing about these shoes. He didn't want to wear the shoes. That's why I thought he was quieter. I was talking him into it. Paul Greenery says, Earlier that day, a young woman, Ashley Dale, had been shot dead in her own home. That afternoon, Sean was talking about the shoes he was going to be wearing at the wedding. Angela says, yes. Paul Greenery says, Do you know Ian Fitzgibbon? Angela says, yes. He asks her, do you know now Barry? Angela says, from the area, yes. Paul Greenery asks, when was the first time after August 21st you recall seeing either of those two? Angela says, I don't. Paul Greenery says, I have no further questions. But Adam Davies has a few more. Adam Davies says, you were asked about now Barry and Ian Fitzgibbon. Did Sean ever bring them round for lunch? Angela says no, we didn't have friends in. Adam Davies asks, you wouldn't have his friends over? And Angela says no. And Adam Davies says there are no further questions for the witness. And Miss Jones is released. And that is the end of day 18.